when did you first start working with Jaden Daniels? Both. When did that happen? So, Jaden, well, I got to bring up the name Taylor Kelly. Taylor's one of our coaches at 3D QB, that, that uh, former Arizona State quarterback, spent some time with Arizona in their offseason, went back and coached to Arizona State. Mm -hmm. Being us down here in Southern California doing training, training Jaden going to Arizona State from Southern California, there was this great tie with Taylor Kelly, one of our coaches. So, Taylor's worked a lot with him, but Jaden's been at our field probably doing training probably three plus years. Spent a lot of time um, so with him. Arizona State and the back end of Arizona yeah, there's, State? Yeah, kind of back end of Arizona State, all of the LSU stuff. And so there's really a team of people. Like, you know, I get to sit here today as kind of like the person that talks about working with the guys, but it's always a team of people. Mm -hmm. And then also their coaches as well. We have coaches, you know, that we've been really close with at LSU. And so there's that communication between the player, his coach, our coaches. Um, it's been three years of a lot of work that Jaden really, you know, it's a testament to his his grind. It's a testament to the way that he said, how can I level up? It started about two years ago saying, okay, this is the kind of quarterback I want to be. Here's the, the time, the effort, the energy that I'm going to put into it. Um, and he dedicated himself and it showed up in a lot of ways. And, you know, as crazy as this may sound, Taylor Kelly, the person whose name I brought up last summer, he said, guys, watch, I think he's going to win the Heisman. And it was after a workout where we had had a bunch of NFL guys on the field. And then Jaden brought his LSU wideouts out to the field. And when they got done throwing, he goes, I think he's going to win the Heisman. And because he just had a, a certain way, I mean, what, the way that he was performing, the way that it looked and also the ability that he has, you know, like um, the ability he has to take off with the football. Uh, he just has that that added element that is not just OK, but it it's elite. And we got to see how he progressed as a thrower. There's like this 20 month period that we talk about mm -hmm. that we say that guy improved so much as a thrower and then understanding of the offense, the chemistry that he was continuing to build with his uh, with his with his um, players yes. and also the coaching staff they get to know him better it's not Jaden Daniels year one at LSU it's now him having gone through year one going into year two, year two. And when all those pieces add up you can say man if the stars align if there's not injuries if guys can stay healthy if the defense plays well he's going to be impressive well if you don't mind me uh as we go through your 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 roster here uh of people that are in your care just talking about some of the red flags that you constantly hear surrounding these guys and how you would respond to it or how you have spoken to him uh, how to respond to it. With Jaden Daniels, it's the it, him potentially getting blown up in the NFL and, and how... Um, you know, the conversation that we saw uh, from my colleague Tom Pelissero speaking to a bunch of unnamed executives or scouts or coaches that, hey, Anthony Richardson's bigger than him. He didn't last more than a, half, a third of the season. How's Jaden Daniels going to be able to handle all that? How do you respond to that? I mean, when you turn the tape on, he does get blown up sometimes. And I think he knows it and kind of laughs about it, too. Like, yeah, you know, I got to keep improving in that area. And, and look, it's tough to say there's something about people the way their bodies are put together. I've seen some dudes that just look absolutely as put together as you could ask for. And you're wondering, oh my gosh, like there's no way that that buddy, that, that he's going to get hurt and he gets hurt. And then you see somebody else that they don't look like, you know, man, gosh, if that guy takes some hits, he might, you know, really get hurt. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't ever sustain like the super serious injuries. Yeah, the sprained ankle, the AC separation, there's little things here or there, but it's not the serious, serious injury. So, you know, Yes, he's been blown up. I've watched games where I'm like, oh, man. And he's had to leave the game, and he comes back in. But he's always just kept battling. And so to me, it go, kind of goes to that point of, I don't think you can say I can guarantee that this player is or is not going to get injured. But I think for a guy that has played in games and been hit pretty hard, he's always finished out seasons. He may not have always had games that he played every single snap, but he came back in the game. So it tells me he's a fighter. He's going to play with some type of bump and bruise. Um, and for whatever reason, he's been a little bit lucky, you know, knock on wood. Uh, he hasn't sustained like those major, major injuries. I'm assuming there's not, but I'll ask you anyway. Is, is, is there a drill that you can run to not get hit? I mean, I don't you, know, man. I, you know, you, like, you're walking around somebody with a big broom and just sweeping it and he's got to slide under it. Or I mean, I've seen coaches like that? that do like sliding drills. I've seen okay. coaches that do like, Hey, when we're going to get down, you're going to go head first, feet first, all this stuff. I mean, I just kind of think like there's certain people that have a knack for it. Like I look at uh, Lamar Jackson. He has a knack of just, boom, getting down, like avoiding major, major blowups. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you can teach it. I don't know if it's something like I've had that question asked to me. Is it the way, the style the kid played growing up through Pop Warner ball all the way up into junior high ball? Is it something when you are just the most elite athlete on the field, you may not have had to have learned it? 
but maybe some of the guys that might have developed a little bit later might have been a little bit the less mature. I'm, I'm going to get what I can get, then I'm going to get down. And then as they take off maturity and they excel, they've they've grabbed a hold of that ability to not take a hit. I don't know. I mean, I don't think that there's like a specific drill, like let's bring this drill into camp and we'll fix this. But you speak to them about it though, right? Yeah, I mean, kind of like in a joking way, we'll be like, bro, hey, you know, you got to get down. He kind of laughs and he's like, oh man, you know, like that one wasn't, you know, I wasn't expecting that guy to catch me that clean. I mean, I think he's smart about it. I think it's something that he recognizes as well because the NFL season now is longer, you know? So not only is the punishment a little bit different, but now the season's longer. And if you want to play into the playoffs, you know, you're now talking about like, how do I feel when I'm at game 19, 20, 21 of the season? Well, I mean, my only response to here where he says, I didn't think he could catch me like that is a, a story Marshall Falk told me being the first running back next to Peyton Manning in his rookie season. When Manning, I threw, did he throw 28 interceptions his rookie season or something mm, crazy was, like was that? High. He led the league. By the way, could you imagine if that happened in this day and age? Yeah, a little different. About, I know. With, with all the TV shows talking about what's wrong with this person. And, you know, you see. 28. 28. 28. And so uh, Marshall said um, Peyton would say the same thing pretty much after throwing interceptions. Like, I didn't think that guy could get there. And Marshall, at one point, just midway through the season, goes, hey, Peyton, this is the NFL. Everybody can get yeah, there. Yeah, that's a good so one. So my, my answer would be like, hey, in the NFL, everyone's going to be able to catch it like that. Yeah, I do like that. I'm a big mindset guy with right. quarterbacks. I do like that Peyton had that, like, I'm surprised that guy got there. Because I do think there is something to not being in an avoidance state. Like, you don't want to be performing trying to avoid mistakes. But right. Peyton kind of, as a young player, having that confidence to, like, I believe it. I trust it. Oh, I'm surprised that the outcome was an interception, you know? Yeah. Uh, I like that. That just popped into my head. There as, you as go. You're talking, I'm happy you know? to, like, see, I like I'm the, a big mindset guy when it comes to like, look, quarterbacking, like there's just some things you got to do. Like you got to be able to take a beating in a game. You kind of sucked. You kind of threw some crappy passes, but there's that mindset that you continuously, you're going to just, I'm going to trust. I'm going to believe I'm going to cut it loose and I'll learn from the plays that didn't go well. And I was kind of surprised that that one went like that. I wasn't anticipating that. Because if you get in the mindset where this can happen when a young quarterback gets some major scars, as they start to play to avoid mistakes, they're out there trying to like not make another mistake, not hurt the team again. And so it's this balance between like, I have to be smart about the chances I take because I don't want to hurt my team, but I also got to give my team a chance by continuing playing confidently. Let it rip. You gotta just and keep letting let it rip, rip, hitting that back foot, letting it rip. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.